Hello and welcome to Bourbon and Bullets. Uh, let me ask you this question. Do you feel safe? If you are Canadian listening to this, do you feel that the Canadian government, provincial or federal, that all of these stringent draconian measures that they are taking are for your own safety, to keep the public safe? If you live here in BC, you're going to be locked down basically until June. And if you live in Ontario, well, Toronto, probably the rest of Ontario as well, you're going to be locked down to July. Yeah, I mean, really? Is that, is that what's needed as, as the economy goes into the toilet? We were already hovering on recession, and now we're going to be in a, a deep, deep recession. But our bought and paid for our corporate media assure us this is what's best for all of us because the government, they know. They know exactly what they're doing. I think, uh, thanks for the question, I think I, it's, it's important to remind people that the risk is very low in Canada. And that is not necessarily because uh, we're in the clear, but more because of the incredible collaboration and sophisticated systems that we've developed over the last 17 years as a result of our lessons learned through SARS and other, other infectious diseases that have presented themselves as part of a global epidemic, if you will. So that was Patty Haydu graphic designer turned Canadian health minister a month ago telling us, hey, you know what, folks, we got nothing to worry about. No reason to close the borders. No reason to, you know, stop flights from coming in from China because, hey, we, we, the risk is very, very low. It's not like we're going to have to lock down the entire economy and shutter you inside your homes for the next three to four months. No, not at all. At that same press, press conference, she had some very interesting things to say about a Canadian epidemiologist who was over in China working with Chinese authorities. Uh, do we know the full extent of people that have the infection, for example, in the Hubei or in the, in, in the region of, of Wuhan? So we continue to monitor those, those numbers through our participation with the World Health Organization. I think the other thing is that the, the, the research team that has now arrived in Wuhan as of today is being led, by the way, by a, a stunning Canadian researcher who is uh, who's, uh, definitely going to be able to help that team uh, do some deeper epidemiological work that will give us a better sense of where the virus is tracking. So that brilliant epidemiologist is the infamous Dr. Bruce Allward, who uh, in a viral video when being, in, when being interviewed by a Hong Kong journalist, refused to recognize the country of Taiwan because it would be insulting, apparently, to China, the communist dictatorship, that Taiwan exists. Because they, of course, they claim it as, as, as part of China, even though it, you know, it clearly exists as a separate sovereign, part, uh, a separate sovereign country. Um, and, and you know, and as we see, he works for he works for the WHO. We've already seen that the WHA, WHO is nothing more than a branch of the communist Chinese Communist Party. So here we have you know we have the Canadian Health Minister praising praising this epidemiologist who's going to do great work and and teach us all about what's going on with Corona with the with the beer bug. Um, you know, because surely that's what he has. Uh, you know, he has Canadian interests at heart, not not protecting the Chinese Communist Party. And just just to refresh your memory here, I'll give you another look at uh, at the good doctor. A senior WHO official has raised hackles in Taiwan by appearing to dodge questions about Taiwan's exclusion from the World Health Body. During an interview via video chat with a Hong Kong media outlet, Bruce Isleward, a Canadian epidemiologist remained silent for about 10 seconds when asked if the WHO should reconsider Taiwan's membership. After their video hookup appeared to be disconnected, the interviewer called him back. This time, Isleward declared that if he had contracted the coronavirus, he would want to be treated in China. WHO considered Taiwan's membership. Hello? We, with the, with the... Okay, I can't hear you. I couldn't hear your question. Okay, yeah, let me, let, let me, let me repeat the question. No, so... that's okay. Let, let's move to another one then. When Islewood was asked about Taiwan, he stalled for close to 10 seconds and avoided a reporter's question. But the reporter persisted. I'm actually curious on talking about Taiwan as well, on Taiwan's case. Hmm? 
we decided to give Dr. Alward another call to follow up. And I just want to see if you can comment a bit on how Taiwan has done so far in terms of containing the virus. Well, we've, we've already talked about China. Iowood is an assistant director general at the WHO and is a Canadian trained epidemiologist. Ever since the pandemic broke out, he has constantly sung China's praises. I left um, inspired and with a deep admiration for, uh, you know, the common Chinese people uh, that, that I worked with. If I had COVID-19, I want to be treated in, in China. Lin Shijia, the CEO of the Foundation of Medical Professionals Alliance, lamented that the WHO has been deeply poisoned by Chinese influence. He said he believed that once the pandemic was over, each nation would seriously consider how to reform these kinds of international organisations that had been heavily infiltrated by China. So there you have it. Our Canadian health minister, the federal health minister, Patty Haydu, the graphic designer turned health minister, is basically taking her advice from Bruce Alward, who is nothing more than a Communist Party spokesperson. And so when she tells you that she ha she's looking out for Canadian interests, no, she's she's looking out for Communist Party, Communist Party of China's interests, because through Bruce Allward, that's where she's getting her, I mean, she's, you know, bless her, bless her little heart, you know, the graphic designer doesn't really have much of a grasp on, you know, the implications of world pandemics, because as we all know, she got the job not because she was qualified, but, you know, because she was a woman, because Trudeau said, well, we got to have 50-50 representation, you know, that's the main thing, got to have diversity, you know, who cares about expertise, and as, as we're seeing in the grips of a global pandemic, sometimes expertise is kind of a, kind of a handy thing to have, so that she, you know, if we had someone with actually some experience and some knowledge, it might be a counterpoint to, you know, a man who is nothing more than a propagandist for the Communist Party of China. So yeah, that, that, that could come in handy. It would be nice if we actually had somebody standing up there talking uh, about Canadian interests and not what best reflects on um, Communist China. Um, not to mention completely pretending that the, the you know, the, the um, country of Taiwan doesn't exist, you know, on top of it. You know, we're just going to erase the... Uh, the concerns of 25 million people, uh, a country, by the way, that has done remarkably well in handling the beer bug, D despite being in very close proxim proximity to the epicenter of the disease, they've had very low um, cases of infection and deaths. So, you know, instead of listening to this uh, propaganda mouthpiece, maybe we should be recognizing sh Taiwan and learning from what they did. Meanwhile, our bought and paid for corporate media are you know just basically echoing the same propaganda and it takes an american news source not that i expect anything of the cbc but it takes an american news source namely fox news and tucker carlson to expose how deep the propaganda machine is ingrained into, into canadian establishment so are we at all surprised that the canadian federal government is completely infiltrated by the interests of the Chinese Communist Party. I guess we shouldn't be. I mean, there's a reason why Trudeau is pushing for the implementation of 5G um, by Huawei. But in case you've forgotten just how much our trust fund baby, former snowboard instructor and drama substitute drama teacher prime minister loves the Chinese Communist Party's dictatorship, well, let me remind you. The level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China, um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime and say, we need to go green as fast as we need to start you know, investing in solar. Not only was he praising China's dictatorship, but his whole conception that they were turning their economy around on a dime and going green as fast as was just more Chinese Communist Party propaganda. This was at a time when they were building a coal plant a month, and they still are building a coal plant a month, and they will be until 2030. Well, who cares, you might say. He's an idiot. We all knew that. Well, that, that is certainly true, but he's an idiot that somehow holds the reins of power. Um, yes, certainly it's Gerald Butts that's controlling those reins behind the, behind the door. Nevertheless, the agenda is the same. And the agenda right now is to model ourselves after communist China, which means extreme limitations on civil liberties with no end in sight. 
So when I hear Patty Heyju say this, uh, we will be in this situation for a while. And I think Canadians need to understand this isn't about two weeks of social distancing. This is, this is about months of social distancing. And that's why um, Minister Morneau in the last several days uh, made the announcement that he made about uh, financial assistance for Canadians, understanding that there are going to be a tremendous amount of layoffs. This is going to be hard for us. This is going to be hard for us as a society. This is going to be hard for us financially. But I have every, de- I have, I have every confidence that we will, we will get through this together. And that we will come back, uh, we will bounce back, and that our communities will be stronger than ever. But now is not the time to take your foot off the social distancing measures. Oh, really? We're going to bounce back. Uh, Considering we were on the verge of recession before this pandemic started, it's highly unlikely that we're going to bounce back. But of course, you you ask a graphic designer about a pandemic, uh, you get nonsensical answers. And if you ask a graphic designer about you know how to run a national economy, you're also going to get nonsensical answers, um, especially when they're steeped in propaganda. Um, meanwhile, we are seeing a never-ending restrictions. Well, I suppose there is some end, because eventually we'll all just be welded into our homes, I suppose, but uh, we're not quite there yet. But they certainly are mounting. The, the restrictions get tighter and tighter. And What's notable is that while the police have lots of time to and lots of lots of time and manpower and resources to go out and break up parties, you know, little house parties, you know, oh my god, you had more than five. Yeah, you, had, you know, you had a dozen people. Oh my god, you know, think the humanity of it all. Um, crime is skyrocketing across Canada. Stay home, keep your distance or now pay the price. Canadians are being hit with penalties now as governments move to reinforce the shutdowns right across the country. We lead our coverage this hour with John Northcott, who has the latest details about this increasingly aggressive response, John, from officials who are really targeting people who aren't following the rules. Absolutely, Heather. And that battle is coming on a couple of fronts, not least of which new laws that can be used, new fines that can be used for people not playing by the rules, but in many cases, dedicated squads of bylaw enforcement officers or police officers who are tasked with making sure the rules are being followed and meeting out those punishments. We can begin in Newfoundland where the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary is well underway with a special uh, squad uh, and they are keeping a close watch on anyone who does not want to play by the rules and enforcing that as they go along. And we can tell you that for example, uh, they will investigate you. Again, this would be for failing to quarantine yourself, meeting in uh, larger groups, uh, not closing a business, that is not essential. Uh, this is a situation, uh, or that is not non-essential. This is a situation where it would be a full police investigation. So this would mean, for example, using surveillance videos, interviewing witnesses, and random arrivals by police to check on the situation. Wasn't that great? The squads of police and bylaw officers, surveillance videos, not to mention just random police checks um, to make sure that you know you're not having a barbecue. Meanwhile, in Vancouver. Stores on Robson Street. That's the if you don't know Vancouver, Robson Street. That's the major uh, uh, shopping street in the middle of the city. They've had to all board up their their shops because there's no police around to stop people from just smashing the windows and coming in and stealing everything. So boy, they they've really got their priorities straight on police resources, don't they? They want to make sure you know as long as us citizens aren't uh, you know we're not uh, doing too much recreating, we're not experiencing too much freedom of thought. You know, that's, that's the main thing. We'll put all our police resources in that. But uh, property crimes, hey, I mean, it was probably, you know, probably committed by an illegal migrant anyway, so really nothing we can do about it. Remember when the RCMP were at Roxham Road in Quebec making sure that uh, all those poor refugees, those poor refugees fleeing war-torn upstate New York with their fancy roller baggage and their Dr. Dre uh, beats head, Weiler's headphones on, being whisked away to their, their free hotel room and, and health care. Remember how it was so important that we do that, and it was racist to even call them illegal migrants. We had to call them irregular citizens. Um, yeah, remember all that? Now, of course, the police in Quebec, well, they may, they may not be so good at shutting down illegal migrants just, you know, jumping over the border, 
but they sure will crack down on citizens going about their daily business. In Quebec, where they are investigating anyone who is trying to cross the border into other provinces, into New Brunswick, into Ontario, into Newfoundland and Labrador, or into the United States, saying, why are you traveling? Is it essential? And if it's not, or if there's some debate about that, they will make the call. Boy, I sure feel safer knowing that, you know, the police are going to make the call on whether I should be allowed to go about my daily business while illegal migrants are allowed to not only jump over an international boundary, but are, are the police actually work as baggage porters to help them across. Um, yeah, what's wrong with that picture? Okay, folks, that's going to do it for today. I just wanted to sort of summarize a few things that are going on in our country and around the world. Um, that you may not be aware of. So I hope that I'm providing a useful service. And if you think that I am, please, as always, drop a dollar or two in the virtual tip jar. You're not limited to a dollar or two. It can be more. But uh, any donation is greatly appreciated. And that is via PayPal. Link in the description. So thanks, as always, for watching and listening. And until next time, this has been Bourbon and Bullets.